Hi there. Good afternoon, everybody. I want to welcome you here to Prog Monster. My name is Murph. I am the host of this show, a show dedicated to progressive rock and other forms of rock music. So I'm going to do a kind of a one-off show here. This is a show that I've done periodically throughout the history of the channel, uh, where I've discovered that I have an album that doesn't meet the criteria for the look back at a classic rock album, but it's a great album, so I want to talk about it. So I can't do it on that show, and then I can't do it on the What's New because it's older than the current year we're doing. So I've come up with this show where I do an album called Recent History Album Review. I've done several of this, of this type, I'm, maybe as many as seven or eight, but this is the most recent album that I have. So this album came out last year, um, well before we get started, um, I'll introduce the album. So the album is... The Chronicles, let me get right up close here. The Chronicles, the group is called The Chronicles of Father Robin. The album is The Songs and the Tales of Eowa, or Eowa. I'm not sure how you want to pronounce it. This is book one. So there are three albums in this set, and this is the first one. So this was released September 15th of last year, 2023. It's about um, 46 minutes in length or so. And uh, I did have the producer here, but I cannot find it now. So we're going to open it up a bit just so that I can review it. I was going to write it down on my clipboard and all that, but the problem with it is that it's... They're a Norwegian band, or Norwegian supergroup, if you prefer, of just different musicians from other bands. They've been doing this for about 30 years to get ready for this. And so it's difficult to write all that stuff on a board. It's quite complex, this album, to say the least. Um, so the cover design, of course, was um, Thomas Hagen. Thomas Hagen is the cover design on this really complex looking album. As you can see, lots of little creatures, uh, wood, really detailed uh, album cover. I like the mountain. I really like this kind of tree-ish type thing that's growing on here. And all, actually all three albums in the series are similar to this, uh, book two and three. I will probably eventually do one on them as well. Um, yeah, excellent, excellent cover. So the whole album, of course, you got little pictures in here of AOA as it pertains to a global look, <laughs> I guess. And there are, on the album, five tracks but when you look at it on CD, it shows up as six. So I think one of the songs, uh, Elysian Tree, actually is a two-parter and shows up as two parts on the album CD. So you'll get opening, which is number one. Number two is um, Elysian Tree. And then number three is part of Elysian Tree before you get on to the other four, three tracks. So and it's absolutely a killer album. I absolutely love it. I've been waiting to get to a point where I feel comfortable enough to talk about it because it's quite quite comp it's quite complex. Sorry, my speaking is not so complex, but it is quite complex. So I'm going to give you a little bit of um, details on the band itself. So you have Andreas Wettergreen Strawman Prestmo. He is the opening, like he's one of the people in the band. He he is the vocalist, pretty much. He does play some uh, different types of guitars, including Fender Lone Star, Stratocaster, Gibson, Les Paul Studio, and uh, I, I think it's called the Oslo Instrumental Fabric, number 0202, a Gibson guitar as well. Tamine Santa FE 12 string acoustic guitar, or electric guitar. Uh, yeah, just a host of electric guitars and acoustic guitars. And he also plays the Chandler Precision Bass and an Oberheim. Um, yeah, just different types of things. Some electric organ, glockenspiel, and percussion. The, the thing I should note here before we get too far into the review of this album is that they tried to stick with instruments that were available for the time period they wanted to replicate, which was the early 1970s. Um, yeah, so they've stuck with that. So... Anyways, the next guy, John Andres Nielsen, he is a ba bass, primarily a bass player, playing several different types of bass, including an electric 
H2B electric bass guitar, and he does the vocal vo uh, the backing vocals as well. Um, Henrik Harmer is next up in the list, and he is a drummer, percussionist, um, and does some backing vocals as well. Thomas Hagen Carvall, he is a also playing pretty much guitar. Uh, does play a Gibson Les Paul electric guitar, Gibson Southern Jumbo, Gibson LG3 acoustic guitar, Gibson F2 and a mandolin, electronics and sound effects, and he does some backing vocals as well. So they've, they've listed all of the individual instrumentation. It's all labeled in the booklet, so if you're interested in that detail, you can find it there. Uh, Lex, next up is Alexandra. Alexandra Mor Mor Morozanov, Mor Morozova. Now, I don't believe that this is a Finnish name, but it could be. He is the main vocalist here, although Andreas does do some vocals as well. Uh, Regine, Regine Meyer, he plays the flute, Hammond B3, Fender Rhodes, MK2, Yamaha, Grand Piano as well, church organ, and some backing vocals. And then they have three special guests who appear on the album but aren't part of the main group that form the Chronicles of Father Robin Band. Uh, Lars Fedrik Frozel, you, most of you will know him if you are familiar with him as being a member of Warbler. Uh, Mellotron Chamberlain, M an M1, a Hammond C3, a Rhodes MK2, a Honor Cavalet D6, a Lindholm Spinet, and basically Mini Moog and some other kind of, um, and he does play Glockenspiel as well. So there are a few, and some harp as well, or harp I should say. Um, so he does play a, quite a bit of string musicianship as well as keyboard instruments. And then Injured, or Injured, Injured, I believe that's what it is, Moy, uh, backing vocals on Death of a Fair Maiden. So that's the credits for the basically for the instrumentation from the band the chronicles of father robin that's the name of the band and then some of the guests who appear on the album so the production of course all done by weathergreen uh, andres weathergreen stroman presto does almost all of the um, production here uh yeah and you've got some i was more interested oh yeah here it is the cover design and concept so the picture that you're seeing and the design of it and the story i guess is by thomas hagen kohol and andres w s presmo as well and the graphic design by thomas hagen carvall so yeah carb hole card hole i think it's card hole uh the artwork of lars bigman kern kernberg kern big kernberg sorry Illustration by Lars Bigman Kur Kurzberg and Oliver Barrett and Anders W. S. Pressman. So there, there's, a, there's a combination of people working here on the cover of the album, which is, uh, to me, it's one of the better covers. I do like it. I wish they'd done something with the back cover, though, instead of just putting that silly emblem on. I could have spaced it out more and done more, because this artwork is quite detailed. It's quite good. Uh, excellent. Okay, so enough of... Uh, the kind of credits and everything that go with most albums. This one has a, a substantial amount of that stuff. But I wanted to give you a kind of feel for the type of instrumentation that they're doing here on the album, what they're trying to achieve. So basically, it's a concept album about this world, Areola, and Father Robin's trips and journeys throughout this. Uh, all three books are going to be like that, but this is the first book of that nature. So... It's a concept album, of course, it's very progressive, and they wanted to stick with instrumentation that came prior to probably 1975, most of the instruments they were using to create that 70s atmosphere prog music. And they do an excellent job. It's an absolutely great album, as we're gonna see now, as I'm gonna talk about the songs now. So, the... Um, the first track is very short, it's less than a minute, well, it's a little over a minute, sorry. The Tales of Father Robin, it's just the opening track. Um, it's a story-like opening, it's kind of setting you up for the what's going to come. You've got some clear voice, um, some mystical feel to this, um, um, some kind of uh, 
folky type guitar and um, uh, acoustic guitar parts that open up this track. Um, I like this track, but it's probably the weakest track on the album, and primarily because it's the shortest. The other four tracks are absolutely killer. I gave them all eights or above. Absolutely. Uh, the Elysian Forest, which is, I think, the kind of single that they were going to release. I don't know if they released it or they didn't release it. Somebody might know and can put that in the comments section, whether they edited it down for album or for radio play. I don't know. Um, but that was the generally, I think, is considered the opening track. Um, um, very complex sounds here going on. Uh, well put together, catchy track. So lots of catchy kind of riffs and bits and pieces throughout this track. Um, the instrumentation is pretty dominant and strong. So you've got lots of stuff going on here. Very Yes-like in its complication, although not really sounding a lot like Yes, but very complex in that nature. The vocals are very Yes-like as well. His voice is in John Anderson range. You wouldn't confuse him with Don, John Anderson, don't get me wrong. You're not listening to him and saying, is that John Anderson? That doesn't happen. But the vocal range is in that range and sound that John Anderson would normally make. And actually quite a nice, kind of almost a marshmallowy uh, feel to that, that guy's vocals. Um, and uh, the, there's a lot of catchy riffs here on this album. And it's pretty dominated by keyboards as well. So it's an excellent track. I gave it an 8. It's a bit a little bit longer than most tr tracks on the album. Um, it's 11, 11, almost 12 minutes in length. Then you go and it goes to the track that I think is probably my favorite on the album, which is Death of the Fair Maiden. This is about eight minutes in length. So probably the second shortest track on the album. It's a bit more subdued, but catchy at the same time. Uh, the bass is dominant on this particular song. There's a lot of complex and dominating heavy bass very frontal uh, vocals are very strong here i think it's maybe the best vocal song on the album and lots of keyboard and synthesizer parts throughout the entire track excellent track i highly recommend that this is one that you shouldn't miss if you're going to just sample one song on the album i would suggest that so this one would be the one you might want to try Next up is uh, Twilight Fields. It's the longest track on the album. Very complex, extremely complex. Very strong, yes-like vocals going on here again. Not just the forward vocalization of the lead vocalist, but also the kind of um, backing vocals that you get here too are very yes-like as well. Um, keyboards are very complex on this particular track. Lots of interesting sounds. Uh, it's a pretty heavy song. Gu guitars are quite, quite dominating and very beefy at, at, at points as well. Bass and keyboards are adding to that heaviness. So you got this kind of heavy, beefy kind of guitar with the keyboards and the bass adding strength to that heavy sound. Um, and and it's, throughout that, it's also accompanied by this nice kind of flute, almost butter-like, butter butterfly-like looting that's going on throughout that entire heavy part um yeah very dominating um the bass is very dominating very slumberish adding the whole backbone to the so song i i like this song almost as much as death of a fair maiden so these are probably my two favorite tracks on the album and then we get to the last track on the album which is called unicorn um it's about eight and a half minutes or so so you know, the middle song of all of the lengthy songs on the album. So it's the third longest and the third shortest. Uh, I did like this quite a bit too. Um, maybe maybe between this and Elysian, Elysian Forest, I probably would say I like them both uh, pretty well. I, I like them both a lot. I'm not quite sure which one I like more for different reasons. Uh, lots of acoustic guitar here, a uh, strong flute, and creating an almost pastoral or folky kind of sound to their music um uh but it's it's a kind of a wandering feeling song so i think they're trying to create that feeling like he's moving from place to place they want to create that atmosphere because it's a kind of a um story that they're attempting to tell here 
Uh, so you'd have to read the lyrics to find out what the story is, but it's very good. Very complex instrumentation on this particular track. Um, maybe the most complex of the songs. That's saying a lot because they've got a lot of complex stuff going on here. I did like this track quite a bit. I think it's an excellent track to end the album with. Um, but the whole album is a completely a dominating strong album. It's currently, this, this album's currently in my playlist. It's been there about five months. I think it um, it's it's in the top five albums. It could it could potentially take that number one spot away from one of the other albums. It has uh, some certain qualities that would make it a absolute killer album. One of the better prog albums I've heard. Newer prog albums, and I I like that Finnish and Norwegian and uh, music that well, especially the music coming out of Norway. A lot of those prog bands coming over, I really like their sound, and you've gotten a mixture of a bunch of those Norwegian. Uh, people playing in th that have come together to play in this album what they've been working on for about 30 years so absolutely killer album i highly highly recommend that if you're go if you want to hear some classic prog that you're a big fan of classic prog but you want to hear it done um right and not just a carbon copy of that stuff from the past but they're with some old, with its own kind of life of its own this is a great album to do that with it does have some of that wobbler aspects to it as well that I like, which is the main reason I got it. But I really like this, so I'm hoping that the book two and book three are just as good. Now, I've heard book two isn't quite as good, but I haven't heard it or bought it or seen it yet. It's the one I don't have. I have the book three, so I've been looking to get the other one. And uh, yeah, so there you have it. So this is your recent album review featuring... The Chronicles of Father Robin and the album Tales and Songs of Aoa, Book One. And coming soon to a uh, channel near you will be Book Two and Book Three. So hopefully uh, you enjoyed this. And if you did, please hit the like and subscribe. Do not forget to put your information or anything that you want to talk about down below. Or if you've got a question, you can do that. Or if you've got something that you think um, people might want to know about this album that I missed... Uh, because it's a very complex album, then you can put that down there as well. Don't forget the notification bell. And we will see you again soon here on Prog Monster. So have yourself a good day and take care and goodbye.